On today's Cook With Me series, I'll be making Korean oxtail soup. If you're interested in how I made this, just keep on watching. To start off, you're going to get a bowl with cold water and place your oxtail bones in there for about one hour. After that hour is up, you're going to want to rinse all that impurities away and just make sure that all that blood is removed. And you just see here that I am just washing and rinsing the bones very well, removing any excess fat trimmings off the um, meaty parts. But you don't have to take too much of the fat off because you kind of need some for your broth. Okay, so once you've cleaned all your oxtail, um, I have another pot here ready for me to boil. So I'm just going to turn it on. You're going to want to use two pots for this or you can just use the one. And then while the water is still cool, you want to put in your oxtail. Now I'm not using a lot of water right now. Basically what I'm trying to do is boil all the impurities out of the oxtail. So I'm going to make it boil once, drain the water, and then move on to my next pot. Or you could just wash this pot again and use it again. But you're going to want to bring this to a boil. Okay, so I'm just going to let that sit and boil. So once you have that pot ready to boil, you're going to want to get your other ingredients ready and prepared for your second pot. You're going to first want to get a daikon radish. So it's radish, or I know some Chinese people like to call it white carrot. Um, it's a very, I don't know how to explain it, but yeah, mine's looking a little dry, so it's ready to use. And then you have some green onions and garlic. Now I like to use the whole clove. I don't really like to chop it up, but I'm just going to throw the whole thing in. Okay, so here I am just chopping up the daikon radish and you can cut it to any bite-sized pieces. You don't want to cut it too small because when it cooks down too much, it does kind of melt. I mean, you'll notice it once you keep reboiling the soup, but this is the size that I like to chop it. doing here is just peeling the garlic and I'm going to basically throw it in just as a whole. When peeling the garlic, I find that when you just smash it a little bit on its side, the skin of the garlic tends to peel off very well. I mean, if you have a different method, just let me know because I've been doing it this way and it seems to work, but obviously the whole garlic gets smashed. So I forgot to mention that some of these are going to actually be going into the second pot of soup. So these, the one I'm the, that I'm going to throw in, I'm not really going to cut, so we're just going to leave that there. But the one that we're going to put inside, I'm just going to want to cut it small.
I forgot to also mention that I'm gonna be using one onion. Okay, so we'll go over it again. We're gonna be using one whole onion, two green onions as a whole, couple, maybe like a handful of garlic, like in the clove, and some radish. I mean, you can put more or less depending on your taste. It does change the taste a little bit, but it's up to you. But I do suggest that you put the radish in because it's part of the recipe. And that'll be our ingredients for now. So as you can see, it's starting to boil, well, simmer into a boil. So all this foam is all the impurities that come out of the bone. Um, I'm not going to scoop that out or skim it, just because I'm going to be tossing this water out. But I'll be, use, I'll be showing you what I do use when I do need to skim it. This is just something I purchased from our local Chinese supermarket, TNT. And so it's like this little mesh thing. And all you do is just skim the foam out, but not remove the um, excess broth. So it's pretty good. It's better than a ladle. I mean, sometimes the ladle takes out all the broth. But anyway, I'm not going to be using it for this round, only because this I'm going to be tossing. So once that's brought to a boil, so I think I boiled it for about 15 minutes now. Now I'm going to just drain it and rinse all that meat. a brand new pot with cold water and now I'll be placing all that cleaned oxtail into the cold water okay you're gonna add your green onion Garlic, onion. Now the radish I'll be adding a little bit later once it's uh, midway cooked just so that this doesn't overcook and get really mushy in the soup so that'll be later. And you're just gonna turn it on and let that boil. Once you bring your soup to a boil, you're going to see some foam rising to the top. You're going to want to skim all that off. This way your soup will be a lot more clear and a lot more um, cleaner. Now that the soup has been boiling for about 30 to 40 minutes, um, I thought that it was a good time for me to put in the daikon radish. So I'm just placing it slowly. Um, you don't want to just plop it all in like how I'm doing it because it kind of splashes back. So 20 minutes after, I removed my whole onion and I also removed the green onion just so that it doesn't overpower the taste of the soup. Don't worry if your soup looks a little milky white. 
I mean the point is to get that rich milky color the more you boil your soup the longer it boils basically the soup will become a very milky whitish color I mean if you go to a restaurant they usually pour in a little bit of milk powder just so that they can achieve that milky look so don't be worried if it looks very opaque after boiling the soup for about an hour, hour and a half, you basically pour it out into whatever bowl that you wish. Throw in some of that green onion that you cut up earlier and don't forget to add salt and pepper because the soup is very bland right now so you normally put it afterwards when it's done and you can serve it with a bowl of rice or you can make some noodles to make it into a noodle soup well i hope you enjoy and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and click that subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this and what to expect videos from me thank you bye